I have wondered if I should have further questioned the general when he told me about his commitment to Me Too. The Prime Minister's most senior advisor admits she didn't press for details about sexual misconduct allegations against former Chief of Defence Staff Jonathan Vance. I don't think you would want political staff, let alone politicians, looking into, um, well, doing their own investigations. An investigation, perhaps not. But allegations were brought forward by the military ombudsman against Canada's top soldier. We didn't know anything about this complaint. We didn't know the substance, the nature, or the details of the complaint. The Conservatives so had one clear question. Is who made the decision? Not to inform the Prime Minister. Who decided not to tell the Prime Minister of the existence of an allegation against the General? There was no clear answer. I actually didn't learn about uh, the, I knew nothing about the complaint. We didn't even have a rumor to go on uh, in this situation. We knew that there was a complaint, period. Not everyone buys it. It actually strains credulity that the PMO, PCO, and DND wouldn't have sought information, wanted to stay in the loop about the substance of the claims of the chief of the defense staff. And that could become a problem for the self-described feminist liberals in a year when they may want to go to the polls. It's actually, I'm sure, quite disappointing, not only to many women in the military, but also to many groups and many women outside as well. Um, you know, when you adopt a strong brand, I guess as we call it like that, you have to be prepared to deliver. The liberals did well among women voters in 2019, and we'll see if they can keep them. Hannah Thibodeau, CBC News, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Our chief political correspondent, Rosemary Barton, is here. And, and Rosie, what stood out for you today? Well, Ian, uh, Katie Telford's testimony was is fairly consistent, frankly, with what we'd heard in the past. But I think the part of this story that continues to raise eyebrows here and elsewhere is that the prime minister wasn't told anything about these allegations. Whether the details of the allegations were known or not, whether the complaint was formal or not, remember this was about the country's top soldier at the time. A chief of staff is supposed to control the flow of information to the prime minister, what comes into the office, what he needs to see. That's certainly part of the job. So either this wasn't at that stage where, where she felt he needed to know or the decision had been made that he needed to be kept away from it. And what happens now? Uh, well, the government obviously hopes this is the end of this as a political story that, that Telford has answered all the questions as much as possible and it's done. But the substance of this, the sexual misconduct inside the Canadian military, now has a really public spotlight and a, and a very public commitment from this government to change things. The government did not act on all those recommendations from a report six years ago. It's now asked for another one. It will have to show it is very serious about some systemic changes inside Canada's armed forces. All right, Rosemary, of course, uh, looking forward to your program on Sunday. Thank you. Thanks, Ian.